This is meteorologist Mark Molnar, Hurricane Northeastern. This is a segment of Weather Northeastern where we break it down for the tropical 2020 year outlook. Let's get right into the outlook forecast because many of you have been waiting for this for what seems like months or eons. Well, guess what? I'm bringing it right to you and please don't kill me. Don't have a heart attack. Don't hate on me because guess what? Yes, 2020 has been horrible. Last year, hurricane season rewind back to September. Dorian, Hurricane Dorian, horrible storm destroyed much of the Bahamas. Here is the list of names for 2020. Yes, I do believe that we will get pretty far through this list. Just how far am I talking? As I said, here is my forecast. Let's break these numbers down, shall we? Guess what? 18 to 19 name storms. You're probably thinking, Media Mark, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to kill me here? Because seriously, 2020 has already been horrible. But guess what? We got 18 to 19 named storms. Now, if you are into tropical weather, if this is your thing, if this is the thing that gives you an adrenaline rush, well, there you have it. 18 to 19 named storms. How many of these could be on hurricanes? This is a lot. 9 to 10 will become hurricanes. And how many majors? There you have it, six to seven major hurricanes. Those are category three storms or higher. Essentially, what that means is, if you see over here to the right, you got the normals. Well, guess what? We're blowing it out here as far as uh, averages because this year, there's going to be a lot of factors, especially the neutrality, which I'm gonna get into, that come together to create a year in which we could have, I'm not saying years like 2005 or anything like that. That was an unprecedented year, but it will push up well beyond what previous years of the last several years have done. So let's get right into the particulars. Neither El Nino and La Nina will pretty much be La Nada, nothing nothing. And what does that mean? Usually in an El Nino year into the Atlantic Basin, we see a lot of wind shear. We see a lot, we get some upwelling that occurs. We get can, atmospheric conditions that are not as conducive for tropical systems. And then La Nina, yes, we can get some cooler weather or water sea surface temperatures, but the thing of it is, we tend to see above average hurricane season into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, neutral pretty much is the best of both worlds, so to speak, if you're looking for stronger storms. And that being said, we're not going to see a lot of wind shear this hurricane season, especially along the Atlantic into the Gulf of Mexico, especially the central, southern, Atlantic, stretching westward. But we get into later into September, into October, November. This is where I think we'll see the La Nina set in here. La Nina dipping below that 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 Celsius mark. And that is where we could see a slip into a light La Nina here. That'll still th keep things cranking. It won't have a major effect because it takes a while for the atmosphere as we learned the last couple years uh, for the effects of El Nino to wear off. So that pretty much says that it'll take a little while for everything. And being that we're mostly neutral most of the year, it makes the forecast a little bit easier than it has in past years. Because this, if you like tropical weather, neutral phases are your friend. If you don't like it, then it's your enemy. And being that this year things have been so crazy, with everything that's going on, many of you are probably wondering, why does this have to happen now? Well, let's get right into some of the particulars. I'm gonna show you where I think the biggest trouble areas are gonna be. And we're starting off with your sea surface temperatures. And of course, these play a good part in a lot of tropical development. Now, keep in mind, these do change over the course of the tropical season. And yes, they do play somewhat of a role at the beginning, and that's why you don't wanna to read too much into this, but it is interesting to see 
that's there's some areas that are warmer than average here uh, because we had a pretty warm winter, pretty benign here across much of the eastern part of North America. And what this set us up for, as you can see, I'll show you in the next frame here, the patterns that we've had and then we have now here into April and to part of May, is the fact that we have uh, sea surface temperatures that are pretty much above average in many areas. Now we do have some areas that are below average here out here in the Atlantic and, and whatnot, above average here out towards Cape Verde, but needless to say, we're not gonna dwell on this map. I'm gonna show you the patterns here that we've been flip-flopping back and forth in. Of course, the winter, winter of 2020 here, has been pretty uneventful here across the eastern part of North America. In fact, we saw a lot of those ridges, those high pressure systems. We didn't see any negative NAO index for the most part. We went through another winter with probably very few weeks with a negative NAO index. We just didn't get those blockbuster storms. So we had a lot of time for the water to warm up. Then, of course, springtime comes along here. And guess what? Winter wants to come back. And of course, we get the troughiness here in the eastern part of the United States. Now, this is not going to stick around too much longer. So it's not going to have a major impact on sea surface temperatures from the Gulf up to the Atlantic Ocean here. So that being said, we're going to get right into what I believe the hot spots here for the North American continent from the Gulf of Mexico, the East Coast, and out here what could be explosive development out here in the Cape Verde. And that brings us to my hotspot map here. Needless to say, the Gulf of Mexico, yes, we've had some years in the past several years, past decade, that were tremendous. I mean, if you remember uh, the storm that went up through Texas Harvey that caused massive flooding, needless to say, this year, if you have interest in the Gulf of Mexico, I think that's hotspot number one here. You should not be putting your guard down here if you're from Florida over towards Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and to Texas, especially the central Gulf here into the eastern Gulf. That's where things really could get cranking. The other hot spot that I want to tell you about, of course, and if you're in the Bahamas, you are probably going to want to kill me right now because this is another hot spot here right off the coast of Florida, up the east coast to the Carolinas. Needless to say, last year with Florida, you dodged a massive bullet with Hurricane Dorian, Category 5, 180, 185 mile per hour winds. This year, of course, could be, depending on how those patterns set up here on the Atlantic, it could set us up for a course of quite a bit of destruction. And of course, you have to look at the U.S. East Coast too, particularly up towards New England here who's been dodging the bullet for many decades now. You're well overdue for a major hurricane. That's not to say a hurricane's going to happen, but I'm just saying statistically, especially in an active year like this, you do go back to years like 1995 where we had a really active year, and a lot of those storms stayed out here in the Atlantic Ocean, which was really good news. That was good. But it all depends on how this pattern sets up at what time these storms make their trajectory along the upper airflow pattern. It's all by chance. So you can't predict each individual storm, but needless to say, that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a very active year, which could correspond with more landfall hurricanes, especially here in the Gulf, along the Southeast coast, in particularly up here, where I believe there'll be enough of a pattern here out in the Atlantic. And of course, these high pressure cells build westward. The recurvature, let me show you, let's put those tropical systems into play here. Now don't focus on each individual tropical point out here that I have spinning, because it'll drive you insane. You'll be like, oh, Meteo Mark, how do you know that this one's gonna head this direction and that one's gonna, and what, what name would you give that one? Well, you can't get down into semantics like that. 
Typically, this under a pattern like this, historically, these are some of the tracks of some of the major storms have taken, whether they're tropical depression, tropical storm, or hurricane. So you get you break it down like that, and it, it makes it into a little bit easier to break down for you. Cape Verde's, yes, another big hot spot here. Hot spot number three, I believe this is where we will see a lot of development take place here this hurricane season. Now, if you have interest out here in the Leeward, Windward Islands, Puerto Rico, I know Puerto Rico, you do not want to hear about any more major hurricanes. Unfortunately, this is going to be an active year. And of course, here in the Caribbean, usually you don't get a major hurricane out here it's, it's quite a while. It's averaging every 20 to 30 years on average. It's not to say one won't happen this year, but all I'm saying is it's a little bit tougher down here into the Caribbean. So in a nutshell, here it is. This is what we've got going on. Bermuda, you might see a lot more storms passing just west of you this year. Dangerously close to the U.S. East Coast. And of course, you're not immune up here in eastern New England and Nova Scotia and New Finland. You are no stranger to hurricanes, especially Category 2 hurricanes, that have had a tendency to come up and give you a good smack up here into portions of eastern, southeastern Canada. So, with all of that taking place, and these tracks and this pattern that we'll have across the U.S. East Coast, especially since we'll be lifting out this trough in time. And of course, we'll go into a big old Bermuda high pattern here across the U.S. East Coast, and that will help steer some of those systems up to portions of the U.S. East Coast or dangerously close. So needless to say, that takes us out later in the hurricane season to the projected sea surface temperature anomalies. This gets pretty interesting here because it will allow us to warm up even further here in the, especially in the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico, which is, that supports my trouble spot number one of choice here in the Gulf of Mexico. Off the Bahamas here, off the Florida and Carolina coast, and then out towards portions of the Leeward, Windward Islands, out to the Cape Verde Islands and the uh, western coast of Africa there. That is where we're looking at some of the biggest anomalies. And of course, if you want to break it down, some people say normal, some people say average. The correct term here is average because normal, if you break down human history here, we are just a little speck in time. So what's normal to us may not be normal to the entire planet structure of the whole temperature scale. So we go by averages. This is what's average to us. And of course, if you push those numbers up this year, this is the anomalies you get. This is warmer than average for what we have observed over the last couple hundred years. So putting that in perspective, it's a very humbling timeline that we're in. But we have to work with what we've got because Records have not been being kept for a tremendous period of time. So, that being said, what do you all think of to this uh, season's hurricane season? You can always comment in the section below this video. And of course, as always, it's really nice to provide you with some of the best hurricane information that I have available. And why not give me some love on social media? Keep in mind, I do keep these updates going throughout the hurricane season and my forecast area from the Northeast and North America, Meteo Mark on Facebook. You can also find me on Hurricane Northeastern for all the hurricane updates. Meteo Mark, of course, Weather Northeastern Facebook page. I got a couple Facebook pages. Give me some love on Twitter, WX Northeastern on Twitter. Yes, I'll do some hurricane stuff on there as well. And if you want to visit my website, MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane Northeastern 2020 Hurricane Outlook. It's been a pleasure to bring you my prediction for this 2020 outlook. Thank you.